So the other day I was looking at this Dell Optiplex 3020 and was thinking, why not review this machine? Today I'll answer the question, is the Dell Optiplex 3020 still worth it in 2022? Let's find out. right here is a Dell Optiplex 3020 small form factor. I got it for about 50 euros at a school near me and a, that was selling tons of these. Inside we have an Intel Core i5 4590 CPU with 8 gigs of RAM that I upgraded from 4 gigs of RAM. We also have a 500 gigabyte hard drive and a 255 watt power supply. Now the I.O. in this machine is not the best and is quite bad especially at the Dell Optiplex 9010, the one above has more I.O. and is tinier. On the front it has two USB 2.0 ports which is kind of weird. A microphone and a headphone port, a laptop style DVD RW drive and of course the power button. On the back it has a display port 1.2 port and a VGA port for displays. Further down we have four USB 2.0 ports for a mouse and keyboard and any other devices such as a joystick which don't need too much data and two USB 3.0 ports for any other devices that need faster connectivity. And we also have a one gigabit ethernet port for that nice fast internet. Then there's a line in jack and a headphone speaker out jack. And of course we have the power supply plug. Okay guys, so here are the internals of this Dell Optiplex. As you can see here, we have our CD drive and under here, if I just take this out, like so there's our hard drive. Um, so that's our 500 gigabyte hard drive. This machine only has two SATA ports. Oh, let me get this back in here. This machine only has two SATA ports, which is kind of disappointing since the other two machines have three SATA ports. So the 7020 and the 9020 have two SATA ports. Um, which is kind of disappointing since you could probably just chuck an SSD underneath the hard drive tray and then you can have SSD, DVD, um, and hard drive. Over here we have a PCIe X16 slot and then a PCIe X1 slot. I don't know if you can see that. I'm just going to take off this shroud. Um, there you go. That's the X1 slot. Okay, so here we have our PCIe X16 slot and then a PCIe X1 slot. Now, the problem with this is if you try to put in a dual slot graphics card, so up here, or just pan the camera up a little bit. We have our PCI um, E slots here, so you can just take this off, and these are the little. If this comes out, come on. There we go. So we have our little thingy covers. Um, so if you want to put in a dual slot graphics card, you're going to be limited to the X1 slot, which is you're going to lose a lot of performance. Now for the 7020s and 9020s, you'll have a PCIe X4 slot here, which is nice because you will only lose uh, a bit less performance compared to the X16 slot, but here you'll lose a lot of performance to the single lane PCIe slot. Now, the only reason this would be good for is like a uh, one gigabit network card or something like that, like a serial card or something, but no graphics cards. Some of these machines shipped with a Radeon card, I'm not sure which one, but it was a single slot graphics card and just fit in here. Um, I've seen other people take this power supply out and make it external, so if we just have the camera over here, this is the power supply. Uh, it's a Dell OEM brand, 80 plus bronze uh, rating, 255 watt power supply, which is uh, kind of pushing the system to the limits, especially if you install a graphics card. Um, I've seen people take this power supply out and use extensions because these cables are pretty short. So one of the cables, one of the cables goes over here to the CPU, and then another one's under the hard drive tray here. Um, so yeah, it would be kind of um, you have to get extensions for the power supply if you want to have an external power supply. Um, as for if you want to use a riser for the graphics card, that is okay. So a 1650 low profile I think would fit um, because it doesn't need any power but that would be pushing the power supply to its limits and the slot but I would recommend an MSI uh, GTX 1050 Ti low profile since um, it should be decently, power supply should be decently adequate with that and it's a decent card you can get pretty good frame rates out of it and you can get it for about 150 euros and stuff like that um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Here's our CPU. It's kind of just a Dell OEM cooler. Nothing special. Uh, yeah, we have 
some Dell sticks of RAM in here, two four gigabyte sticks. Let me just take one out real quick. Okay, so here's the RAM. I'm just gonna zoom in onto that there. Okay, so there's a four gigabyte stick of PC3 1200U RAM, as you can see here. And I have a matching stick. I think the other one's SK Hynix though, but I mean, they pretty much look the same. Um, so yeah, those are the sticks of RAM. Okay, there we go. That's the RAM slot back in. Let's just put this back in again. So, and yeah, that's pretty much for the. Uh, that's pretty much it for the internals. Um, uh, let's move on to performance. When I got the machine, it had Windows 10 Pro pre-installed. I reinstalled a new copy of Windows 10 Pro anyways. These machines have their license keys attached to their motherboard, so you can install any version of Windows and it'll automatically activate. Now it's time for some synthetic and real world benchmarks. I'll be comparing this machine to an older generation Dell Optiplex 9010 USSF, which stands for Ultra Small Form Factor. It's the same machine that you saw earlier in the video. Make sure you go and check out that video once it is out. Pause now to see the specification differences. First in Cinebench, we see a slight difference between the two machines. The older machine wins this test. Moving on to Silverbench, we see the same thing happening again. The older machine wins again. Next up, the 7-zip file compression and decompression tests. As you can see, in the decompression tests, the tiny PC wins for the third time in a row. As for the compression tests, this machine finally wins for the first time, breaking the streak of the tiny PC. Now we will try to watch 4K, 1440p and 1080p YouTube videos on both systems. Starting off with 1080p, we can see that both systems pass. Moving on to 1440p, both systems pass again. And finally, the 4K tests. As you can see, this machine fails the 4K test. I think some extra threads would have really helped here. Up next, real world benchmarks. I will only be testing Minecraft, it's the only game I have on hand. I'll be testing three versions of Minecraft. 1.16.1 since it's a good balance between features and performance. It's also the most popular version of Minecraft to speedrun on. Next, we have 1.8.9. I'm testing this version because it is the most popular version for PvP. And finally, 1.19.2. The only reason I'm testing this version is because it was the latest version at the, out at the time of recording this and is a bit more intensive thanks to the new terrain generation compared to the other versions. So we're going to start off with uh, 1.8.9. Just do this. And let's see what happens. few moments later okay so we're gonna go over I need to turn off the music and we're going to put max frame rate to unlimited use BBS on we're gonna put the game to full screen uh, we're gonna put a uh, cloud we're gonna put most of the stuff on fast but yeah let's do like that uh, smooth lighting Minimum, fast, um, and running resistance 16 chunks, brightness bright, no v-sync because this is the world, test, world, creative, 69, 69, 20, best number ever, uh, cheats, done, okay, alright, let's make the world. So the seed is 69, 69, 420. Um, so you guys can test it out at home. And this is just uh, the normal game. Nothing special. That was quite fast. Oh, I'm, I guess I'm falling. Uh, okay. So I'm going to open. There we go. Um, so now I'm going to change the FOV. We can see our FPS, so we're getting about 30 FPS, so uh, yeah, we're getting pretty good FPS. 
Uh, yeah, so we have a few lag spikes as you can see, but overall not too bad. We're getting 100 FPS, which is pretty good. We're on integrated graphics as you can see over here. Uh, let's just go into spectator mode. Uh, GM spectator. Spectator. Bruh. What? Mode, spectator. And we're gonna go really fast. Alt F3. Okay, we're gonna go extra fast. So, as you can see, we're getting over 100 FPS all the time. Okay, so here are our settings. We have uh, fancy graphics, smooth lighting is maximum, um, clouds are fancy, full screens on, VBOs are off, render distance is 25, max frame rate is 120, um, use VSync is off, and here are our frame times, or frame, frame rates I guess. Uh, we're getting 45 FPS, which is kind of disappointing, but if we turn on v use VBOs, it should be way better. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna walk around a little bit. Um, frame rate. Yeah, we're going around 75 FPS, I would say. Uh, we're not hitting 120, but uh, we do have extra chunks on, as you can see, they're still loading in the background. I'm sure Optifine or something like that would help a lot, but I don't have that installed at the moment. I just have the playing game installed. So moving on to the next version. All right, for our next version, we're going to be playing 1.16.1. So we're going to start that up right now. Again, none of these versions have Optifine installed. Um, this is just for testing purposes. If you are actually going to use this mi machine for Minecraft, I'd highly recommend installing Optifine. I'm sure you can find um, a load of videos on YouTube on how to install Optifine for any Minecraft version. Uh, it's very popular. Uh, yeah, so I'd highly recommend that. Okay, so here are resolutions. Um, we're gonna put these to um, the low settings that we used before, so full screen brightness. Let's just uh, make a new world, we'll call it Test World 16.1. Creative, not uh, cheats, game rules, 20. Uh, like so, generate structures. Yep, that looks good. All right, let's make the world. That was very good with speeds. Uh, as far as frame rates go, let's have a look. Oh wow, that's not very good. Okay. Okay, we're running at 11 FPS. This is not a good start. Uh, we're just probably gonna let the. Oh, I still have on 25 chunks. What's the main setting? Now it's running a bit faster, it's just generating these chunks around. So we're doing a bit better now, 30 FPS, still a load of spikes as you can see there. Fly around a little bit. Yeah, it's still lagging quite a lot. Let's try turning the settings down a little bit more. Let's do uh, 12 chunks, that was the default last time as well. Yeah, we're getting a bit better frame rates. Uh, let's try 8 chunks. Yeah, that, that's, look, now we're getting like 60 FPS solid. FPS, there we go, we just hit 100. A few lag spikes here and there, but uh, so far so good. So that's that, let's try turning the settings up a little bit. Let's put it back to, up to 25. Let's do fabulous settings. Um, let's just put everything up. Nope. Oh yeah, that we're getting 30 FPS. Fabulous settings. Uh, let's put it down to fancy. Okay, that's not that bad. That's 40 FPS. Still quite, quite bad. Yeah, quite a lot of lag spikes. 
Um, yeah, so I'd say just use the low settings if you're going to play 1.16 or install up to find that helps a lot for this version. So let's move on to the next version now. Okay, and our final version here is going to be 1.19.2, so let's start that up. Few moments later. Okay, we're in. Let's see our settings. Oh, wow, well, there's loads more settings here. Let's put it against fast. Um, smooth lighting minimum. Yeah, this all looks good. Let's put this down to 16. Uh, that will leave that as that. 120. Fast clouds. Yep, that looks nice. Okay, let's just try. Fans on the PC are going now, pretty much. Um, C9, C9, C20, again, same seed on all of these machines. Um, alright, now we're going to uh, generate the world. Let's see how fast this generates. Last time it was actually pretty good. Okay, there we go. Let's see. Okay. It's quite laggy. Let's do Alt F3. Oh, wow. Okay, we're getting 3 FPS. That's not very good. Okay. Alright, let's try turning the settings down a little bit more. Let's do let's do ten simulation chunks and eight normal chunks. Let's see how that is. Oh there we go, now it's going. Oh yeah. Oh there we go. There's our hundred FPS plus on oh, a big lights like there. Just moving the mouse around. Let's try breaking a few blocks. Let's just try like, I don't know, like, like three TNT, I don't know. No. Let's see the frame rates now. Okay, that was pretty good. Um, let's try bumping the settings a bit more. Okay, let's go in here. Let's try putting this back up to 16 and put this back up to 12. Yeah, and we're gonna put this to fancy. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, that's quite a lot of lag spikes. It's still generating chunks back there. Oh, uh, yeah, I, no. Mm, no. I don't see this play being playable, especially that we're just in a desert where there's like not a lot of terrain generation. Yeah, that, that, look at that, I'm just trying to fly around like this massive like spikes here. No, that's not going to do it for me. So I'd call, um, I'd probably say 1.8, yeah, definite pass for 1.16, I'd say maybe if you're willing to go pretty low settings, and then for 1.19, no, I would call that fail unless you're doing like extremely low settings. This machine is very good for anyone looking for a cheap and fast machine for office work and light gaming, especially if you can find one with decent specs and for cheap, or even for free. But if you're looking for a gaming machine, I would recommend a larger machine such as the desktop and mini tower variants. I also recommend the more advanced models of Optiplexes, like the 7020s and the 9020s, since they have a X4 PCIe slot at the top, which means less performance decrease if you decide to install a dual slot graphics card. Also, they have an extra SATA port if you want to add a second drive, even though there's no space for one. If you're looking to install another drive, just put it underneath the hard drive caddy. Anyways, that's about it for today. Please like, subscribe, and share this video because it helps me out a ton and only takes you a few seconds. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.